Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. You may recognize these words as the opening words of Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. How glad we were when the Northern Ireland executive announced that churches could reopen for public worship as of from Monday the 29th of June. This Cathedral Church of St. Colum has been closed for the last 19 weeks. 19 weeks we have not seen the inside of this church. For 19 weeks we have not heard the sound of music from the organ. For 19 weeks we have not joined our voices with those of our friends and neighbours in praise and prayer. But this morning we have returned to our beloved house of prayer. And even though things look so different and will probably remain so for quite some time to come, we are most grateful to Almighty God for the opportunity to return and to worship together once more. The return to worship has not been easy or straightforward. Many new measures have had to be put in place to ensure that the church is safe for us and for our neighbours. You can see the evidence of these measures all around you. But I hope that these measures do not take away from us the joy and delight of being able to worship together once more. It will take some time for all of us to become used to the new normal. So I ask you to be patient and understanding and to cooperate willingly with the church wardens, stewards and volunteers as they guide you on each step of the way. I wish to place on record my personal appreciation to the members of the Select Vestry and to the parishioners who have offered to help with the cleaning of the cathedral and with stirring duties on Sunday. Without their cooperation, our stress levels would be even higher. For the last 19 weeks, while not being able to meet together physically to worship God, we have been able to do so from the comfort of our own homes. And for this I want to place on record my appreciation and yours to Robert and Linda McGonigal, and to those parishioners who have shared with Canon John Merrick and myself in leading the worship on Sunday. Online worship will continue for the foreseeable future for the encouragement of us all, but particularly for those who for any reason feel unable to return to church for some time. As you worship with us here in the cathedral this morning, or online later in the day, I hope and pray that you will be able to say with all honesty, Lord, it is good for us to be here.
very happy welcome indeed to this service of morning prayer on this the seventh Sunday after Trinity. This is the first service of public worship to be held here in St. Columns Cathedral since St. Patrick's Day. So it is really good to be back and I'm delighted to see so many people here this morning. The Dean is still shielding and on such times as the authorities uh, inform him that he can desist from shielding um, and have it come to services here in the cathedral. I also have a notice from Mrs. Elizabeth Fielding uh, surrounding our Lenten project, Jars of Change. 240 pounds has been sent to Waterhead and in these desperate times when water is so important, it would be great to get the money in the jars counted and forwarded to those in need. People could bring them to church or contact me on 028 7134 6330 and I will call and collect the jars. Our service next Sunday at 11 a.m. will be the service of morning prayer with the rite of holy baptism. Would you please stand? The order for morning prayer begins on page 84 of the Book of Common Prayer. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in summary places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not assemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the sin by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, and to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you as many as are here present to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice onto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful God, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed to watch the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no hat in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant to most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of the sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and have given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent, and unfailingly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his holy spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our hearts shall be open for our prayers. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Praise ye the Lord. The Canticle of the Nighty, which we will read by alternate half verse. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King of all worlds. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands is very to the land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our God. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of the pasture and the sheep of the land. Today, if you will hear his voice, when your fathers tempted me, forty years long as I agreed with this generation and said, This is the people that the unto whom I swear in my wrath. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, the Son that the shall be for the Son Amen. The Son appointed for this the seventh Sunday after Trinity is Psalm number 128. And you can find the Psalm on page 746 of the Book of Common Prayer. Again, we will read the Psalm. I will turn it to conference. Blessed are all those who fear the Lord. You shall eat the fruit of the toil of your hands. Your wife within your house shall be like a fruitful vine. Your children Thus shall the one be blessed. The Lord from our Messiah bless you. May you see your children's children. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me now? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to him, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Silpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. 
when morning came, it was there. And Jacob said to them, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel? When, why then, have you received me? Laban said, This is not done in your country, giving me honour before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me for another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her work. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. Here I have the first lesson. The Canticle of Verbs Fortitudinous on page 90. We will read by alternate half the verse. We have a strong city. Open ye the gates. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusts us in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever. The way of the just is uprightness. Yea, in the way of thy judgments, O Lord, have we waited for thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Mm. 
reaffirm our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O Lord, save the Queen. In June, thy ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save thy people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our hearts within us. The collect of the seventh Sunday after Trinity. Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, graft into our hearts the love of thy name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of thy great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The second collect for peace. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies. That we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the third collect for grace. O Lord our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who hast safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same of thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governments to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by your grace, you call us here today to be of a goodly and godly fellowship of faith. We pray for all denominations throughout the world, Bless all clergy, church leaders, and all those who help in daily worship. We pray that you may guide them as we return to a more familiar way of worship. Following our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Cork, Cloyne and Ross, and the Right Reverend Paul Colton. We pray for the parish of Burnley and Simon Mills. We pray for the rector of Reverend Jonathan McFarland. And Mr. Peter Clement, our diocesan leader. We pray for the Church of Ireland and the Most Reverend John McDowell, Archbishop of Armagh, Primate of All Ireland, and Metropolitan. Let us pray for our own diocese of Derry and Fulham, and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Andrew Forster. Grant that your word may be truly preached, truly heard, and faithfully received. By your spirit, fashion our life. 
lives according to the example of your Son, and grant that we may show the power of your love to all among whom we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer in the time of coronavirus. Almighty and all-living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray to you through Christ the Healer for those who suffer from the coronavirus in Ireland and across the world. We pray to you for all who reach out to those who mourn the loss of each and every person who has died as a result of contracting the disease. Give wisdom to policymakers, skill to researchers, comfort to everyone in distress, and a sense of calm to all those days of uncertainty and distress. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who showed compassion to the outcast, acceptance to the rejected, and love to those whom no love was shown. Amen. Amen. A prayer for family and friends. Blessed are you, loving Father, for all your gifts to us. Blessed are you for giving us family and friends to be with us in times of joy and sorrow, to help us in days of need, and to rejoice with us in moments of celebration. We pray for our local community and those with uncertainty regarding their jobs and for those who have already lost their job. For all those who have been unsafe, afraid, or not allowed to leave the confines of their own home. Father, we praise you for your Son Jesus Christ, who knew the happiness of family and friends, and in the love of your Holy Spirit, blessed are you forever. And Amen. Amen. A prayer for the poor and neglected. Almighty and most merciful Father, we remember before you all poor and neglected people whom it would be easy to forget. The homeless and destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to pray for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body and or spirit, and to turn their sorrows into joy. Grant this Father for the love of your Son, who for your sake became poor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A prayer for the bereaved. Grant, O Lord, to you all who are bereaved, the spirit of faith and courage that they may have the strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience. Not sorrowing with those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of thy great goodness in past years, and in the sure expectation of a joyful reunion in the heavenly places. Remembering today the life of the late Ruth McCall and her family circle. We pray for the life of the late Paul Henderson, praying for Dawn, Nicola, Laura, and their families. We keep in our thoughts today her brother Martin Reese, sister in law Ray, and their family circle. We also remember the late Billy McCollum, praying for Lisa and his son Matthew, and their entire family circle. And in this we ask, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us take a moment to bring our own thoughts, needs, and prayers before God. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Amen. 
we say we grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all. What could be less significant 
than a little village church, or perhaps a gospel tent revival with sawdust strewn to cover it on the floor. What could be less significant than half a dozen barely under control children in a Sunday school classroom? What could be less significant than a missionary couple living their lives among native people half a world from home? What could be less significant than the average preacher preaching the average sermon to the average congregation? What could be less significant than an anthem by a dozen untrained voices accompanied by a slightly out of tune piano? But my friends, these are all parts of the kingdom, and you can never tell what part is hidden in their midst. Because we expect at times to find the kingdom in cathedrals and mega churches, in mass choirs and high organs. But these parables suggest that the real kingdom power is to be found in the humblest places among the least likely people. A cup of cold water perhaps given to a beggar. A soup kitchen in the church basement. Church members visiting people who live alone. A missionary, single missionary, walking the streets of Calcutta. These look like nothing. But Jesus promises that there is veiled power here. And over the past two millennia, we have seen the proof. Today the Roman Empire appears only in history books and probably in ruins. But people sing praise to Jesus all over the world. The thousand year reign lasted only a decade. But the church keeps marching on. Communism spent the better part of a century trying to kill the church. But then the communism collapsed and Christians are building churches on its ruins. Not that the church and the kingdom are synonymous, but the church is a manifestation of the kingdom. And not that we should expect the kingdom to conquer all, because the kingdom's form is perpetually little, always seed-sized, divinely designed to be a treasure in earth, not golden vessels so that the exceeding greatness of the Gospel's power might always be God's, not human beings. The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is smaller than all seeds. The mustard seed is tiny, but is not in fact the smallest of all seeds. But the small size is proverbial, and Bible bookstores sometimes offer clear pendants with a mustard seed embedded inside of it as a reminder of our Lord's mustard seed promise. So it is easy to see exactly how a small mustard seed is. But then Jesus says when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs. This parable offers hope. Promising great outcome, outcomes from small beginnings. So Jesus intended to encourage the first disciples who faced daunting odds. And this parable continues to encourage disciples today. Because, you see, most of the church's work gets done in inauspicious circumstances. Our mission seems overwhelming and our right resources seem to you. But Jesus promises that God's power makes everything possible. And indeed the beginnings were small. By Matthew's time, the disciples had encountered serious opposition. It did not appear that the small movement of Christ's followers took a chance against the forces arrayed against it. But God uses that which seems foolish to shame that which seems wise. God uses that which seems weak to shame that which seems strong. And those are the words of St. Paul in Corinthians 1, verse 27. Then, the final verse 32c, 
it comes a tree. So the birds of the air come and lodge in its branches. The shrub that grows from the tiny seed is great by comparison with its beginnings. But I think Jesus had his tongue planted firmly in his cheek to call it a tree. Because the mustard shrub typically tops out at 8 or 10 and at the most 12 feet. Hardly comparable to the mighty cedars of Lebanon with which Israel preferred to lighten itself. So why would Jesus not compare the kingdom of heaven to a great tree instead of a shrub? If he is contrasting a small seed with a great tree, why not pick a truly magnificent tree? Perhaps the best clue comes from the church that has developed over the centuries. The church is indeed a far cry from its beginnings, extending into every nation on the face of the earth. It has grand cathedrals and occasionally wheels real power. But for the most part, the church manifests itself in modest ways, more like a mustard shrub than a towering cedar. So perhaps the lesson of the mustard shrub is that Christians should live expectantly, knowing that God brings great things out of small beginnings, and that we should not expect the kingdom to be great as the world comes greatness. The parables of the mustard seed and the leaven encourage Christians to exercise both faith and patience. God is less likely to sweep through the world like a conquering hero on a handsome steed, and more likely to be found as a still, small voice. In most cases, Christians will see only small evidences of progress, perhaps a couple married at the church altar, a child baptized, a youth club engaged in activities that look more like entertainment than serious discipleship activities. But in God's hands, these small beginnings have the potential to grow so large as to shift the entire world on its axis. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be ascribed as a just teacher of the right and majesty, power, dominion, and glory, henceforth and forever. Let us pray. O God, in days of old you gave to this land the benediction of your holy church. Withdraw not, we pray, you your favour from us, but so correct what is amiss, and supply that which is lacking, that we may more and more bring forth fruit to your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, and with all those for whom we have prayed, this day and forever.